You may ask, what's today's video going to be about? Well, it's about this, the Ace Tone Rhythm Ace, because like its name suggests, it's Ace. Today's video isn't going to be about what it sounds like or who used it. There's a lot of history about the Ace Tone Rhythm Ace on the internet, as well as various videos featuring this machine and the later machines that came from this series. I'm going to be showing you the inside of the machine. I'm going to be doing a few little repairs to it to keep this thing going. And in the future, all being well, I will make new music and I will certainly be using this drum machine to create that sound. I've removed my piece of uh, stage dressing that this was sat on and now we're back to my familiar fold up table. And I'm just gonna show you the back of the rhythm ace first. On this end of the rhythm ace, you've got a jack socket for a start pedal. So you can just tap it on and tap it off. As we move along, you've got two jacks here, a low level output and a high level output. High level output would go into generally amplifiers, mixing desks, etc. But the low level out means you could plug it into something that had a bit more of a sensitive input, like a tape recorder with a microphone input or a microphone input on a mixing desk, something like that. Here the Rhythm Ace has got its original badge and it states that it's 230 volts. So I would say this was probably made for the UK market rather than an import. It's obvious to see that the mains cable has received some damage. So this is something we're going to have to look at. But for now, I'll take the top off and we'll have a look inside. It's nice to see on the bottom of the unit that it's still got its original quality control inspection certificate from the late 60s still stuck on the bottom. This side of the board is effectively an analog sequencer. Uh, this component here is almost like a um, like a set, like almost like a sequence, if you like, where there's various. I think they're diodes, and this diode matrix creates all the drum patterns. And then there's some more circuitry over here. So this is basically that is an analog sequencer. This side of the board is where the sounds are created. In here we've got um, a set of wires. These are actually the triggers coming from the sequencer next door. And this is one of the modifications you can do to these machines, is that you can get a MIDI to trigger converter and you can clip onto these wires here and you can play all the sounds out of the Rhythm Ace via something external driven from MIDI. Along here you've got the switch selector and the wires from the various selections there go to the, this sort of sequencing unit here. And it looks like to be that this is in actual four blocks because there's four bunches of wires connecting to different sections of the, of the switches on the front. So I guess each sequence here is a variation that is then changed on the front. So in essence, you've got four sequences that work slightly differently depending on what's been selected on the front of the machine. Okay, so I'm gonna look under here and I'm gonna see how easy it would be to replace this mains cable. Here's the power supply of the drum machine. As you can see, there's a couple of smoothing capacitors there, the rectifier's hidden under there, the transformer's there, and the on-off power switch is here. Now this is class two wiring, so it's got a two contact cable. Um, and of course this is Japanese wiring so that they're not in the standard colors of normal UK wiring. So I'm gonna replace the mains cable with some UK colored cable. And if you look at the back, you can see that the wire is quite damaged here. So I'm gonna replace that with a rubber grommet and we'll put a new piece of mains cable in and then at least then it'll be a little bit safer. One of the best bits of preventative maintenance you can do with any type of electrical equipment is to replace capacitors. These capacitors here are gonna be 50 years old. At the moment, they seem to work okay, but I am going to order some replacements as I don't have any spares of that value in my stock and I will replace them all because it will give your, whatever piece of equipment you have, if you put new capacitors in, it will always make it last longer. Although you have to be a little bit careful. Sometimes some capacitors can still have voltages inside them, even with the unit switched off. So they should be properly discharged before you remove them. Again, really, this is a job that should only ever be done by somebody who is competent and know what they're doing as far as electronics is concerned. Now you may think I've kind of prepared this already because you can see some flex with a plug on it and a restraining rubber boot. Now the boot here came out of my stock. This cable on the other hand 
is actually off the standard lamp in my spare bedroom because it has a very nice long cable on it and it doesn't really going to miss a couple of feet. I will then put a new plug on the end of it and nobody needs to know. Inside the plug you can see it's got a red and it's got a white mains cable. Not really suitable for mains electricity. However, because the cable is of a reasonable length, I'm still going to reuse the wire because it will make a reasonably good speaker lead. Okay, we have our new mains cable. It's coming in through there. There's a strain relief here and here. And it threads through a little hole down there and into the power supply. Now, sometimes on these things, I would think about putting a cable tie there. And I think I will, only because if this did get pulled, I don't really want it to put any stress on there because that casing there is metal. So just as an extra precaution, I'm just gonna pop a little cable tie on there. Okay, here we have a cable tie. It's probably as old as the rhythm machine. Notice I said rhythm machine because back in those days, that's what they were called. And uh, even many of the later Roland machines were known as rhythm composers rather than drum machines. Anyhow, there it is. That's all good. Looking at everything else, it all looks in pretty good shape. There is a little bit of dust here and there. So I think I might just get some dust remover and a brush. And I'm just going to lightly brush the circuit boards and take some of the dust off. When doing this, you do have to be quite gentle as I don't want to adjust any pots or trims or anything else that could affect the performance of the drum machine. Okay, that's about as much maintenance as I'm going to do today now. The only other thing I would like to do is to clean some of the switches. However, I've discovered a slight issue. The issue being is that I'm not quite sure how you remove these and I do not want to damage anything. So I'm going to get inside each little crevice I can with a brush and some isopropanol alcohol just to give them the once over and I'll do the same with all the other buttons and I may gently clean some of this metal although I don't want to damage any of the print so I might just wipe around the areas rather than actually on the print itself. And for any of you concerned about the standard lamp, don't be, he's working quite well. Okay, well, as you've stood with me this far, I think I should probably let you have a little listen. I'm just going to tilt the camera and see what sound should we have. Should we have a bit of rock and roll? Nah, it's a bit too late for that. I think maybe we'll have a bit of late night samba. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video about the Rhythm Mace and if you like this video and the sort of content I put on YouTube, please like and subscribe and hit the little bell icon so you can be informed of any new videos that I put online. Please share my videos, share it on your social media because every like that I get helps keep things going and who knows where it may lead to. So thanks for watching.